All right, so today we're going to be talking about coroutines. We're going to be doing a very simple introduction to it. We're not going to cover everything that has to do with coroutines. We're going to use the most common use of them. We're going to really dive into depths and talk about what it does. But first, what are we looking at here? This is a really messy scene that doesn't really show much, but it will serve our purposes. And right now I attached the script to our camera that basically allows for us to click someplace and boom, we can create a cool little explosion, right? Check that out. Boom, 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 right? And as many times as I want. The only problem is as many times as I want. As fast as I can click, I can right now make explosions. And that might not be how we want it to be. Our camera's getting a little omnipotent here, right? It's a little bit too powerful. So how are we going to fix that? How are we going to make it so that it has a cool down between these different explosions? So that if I'm just clicking at a massive rate, I can't just destroy everything on the screen as easily as I can. Although I think that would be a much funner game. Uh, we might want to actually put some limitations on the power here. Too much power. Not good. So let's go over to our on my mage camera the script that I created for this and take a look at what this thing actually currently does so right now all it does is it gets this mouse input right here right so just a good old that's a left click right there is what that zero means and it triggers off this explosion spell now when it triggers off this explosion spell this goes down and this is just a simple physics ray cast if you've never seen that before if you're a little bit newer to coding and stuff uh, this might look completely foreign to you uh, this is pretty commonly used in a lot of different types of games though it's uh, just a straight up raycast and you might want to look that up inside of a different tutorial you won't need to understand it for the sake of this tutorial though the main point here is this whole thing right here creates that explosion it gets the location of where i click the mouse and then it makes the explosion right here on this line so let's actually take this a step further now and make it so that there's a cooldown built into the system how are we going to do that well we'll just create a simple boolean We'll create a boolean and it'll say can explode or something like that right it would help if i spelled can explode correctly and set that to true at the beginning of the game so right now we can explode and we're going to actually make it so that not only does the mouse button have to be pressed down we're going to put these two and symbols next to each other to make it so that we have to have a second criteria here be true and when we do this we can put can explode here as well now when we do this, both these things now have to be true in order for this whole thing to be true. The way that the compiler works is it actually goes through this thing first. It goes, oh, is this true right now? And then if it's true, it'll look on this other side as well. Then it'll be like, oh, is this true right now? And if this is true and this is true around this and symbol, then this whole thing right here will become true like that. Now, if one thing is false though, this and symbol makes it so this whole thing becomes false like that anyway so now this has to be true in order for the explosion spell to go off now the thing is though it never becomes false so we're going to want to set it to false at some point now right now as soon as this whole thing is done right here at the end of this if we put down can explode we set it equivalent to false well that right there will make it so that it's basically on cooldown we set it on cooldown right there let's kind of see where we're at right now let's go back into unity we'll hit the play button once it's done loading up and i'll left click and then boom, but I left click again and nothing happens because now that Boolean is false. So all you have to understand at this point is that we're basically setting this Boolean to false right here and that's stopping this explosion spell from going off. Our cameras now has a limiter on it. Now, how do we build in a cooldown timer of sorts? Well, first we need to know how long that cooldown timer is gonna be for. So let's actually put cooldown timer as a float on here and let's call it like five seconds to start off with because that's really noticeable right five seconds is a long time when you're watching something on the screen and let's actually make it so that we can kind of build this in and what we're going to do for this is going we're going to use something called a coroutine it's something that's built into unity now in order to make this from a normal function to a coroutine which is still a function by the way it just returns something different we're going to change the return type here from void we're going to change it to an i enumerator this is something that unity built in and now the, with this return type right here it will need to return something down here if we return this thing we put return we're just gonna return zero for now and it'll it'll count as that and now in order for this to be an i enumerator though it has to yield return it can't just do a normal return what's the difference between a normal return and yield return well you see normally when you return that's like the death of your function it doesn't matter where you return at if you return up here you return down here wherever you return at that's the death of the function it's over that function will not exist anymore and when it runs again it'll start from the beginning it's a new life you know it's it's done at that point it doesn't get to go back from where it stopped so right here for instance when it returns right here and then say we have like something like print and we say hi or something like that well, this high will never run if it just says return. 
because it'll always return before we get to that high. But in a yield return, you actually, when you uh, go back into the script, you'll actually go back down here. You get to almost get resurrected. The yield return will allow you to kind of save your spot, almost bookmark where you are inside of that function. And then you could return to that point in the function and run the rest of your code at a later point. Now, it's not gonna make much sense right now uh, when I'm just explaining it, but I'm gonna show you what I mean now. And it's a race at a high for now. That's not gonna really help us at all. <laughs> understand right now and I push the play button down here inside the game and I start to try to click and nothing happens nothing at all why is that well there's an extra problem here that happens when you use this yield return on here and that said it doesn't really work as a normal function anymore it needs a an extra sort of cushion around it and you need kind of, kind of built in this system for us so a coroutine you don't although it's nothing's wrong with it in terms of the code here it's all working we are not getting any errors but it ends up not working correctly because it's a coroutine so we need to actually write start coroutine on here this is a unity function that can then encapsulate the function itself and run it for us it runs whatever this returns and that might not make much sense to you right now but i'm going to show you more of what i'm talking about here in a second so now if i push play you're going to see that it works we're going to do boom and it goes off awesome right it worked completely and now the cooldown is not working at all but at least it's working here now, the problem here is the reason why it's only exploding once is because that can explode never being set back to true. So what happens if I put can explode and we set it to true right here and we just do it like that? What will happen inside this game? Well, we're going to go back here, hit play and then boom. Wow. It goes off a lot here. OK, so that did nothing for us. We literally created the same problem that we had in the first place. So what's the point of a coroutine? Well, it's actually what comes after this. So this yield return kind of bookmarks our zone here. It makes it so that this can stop running and the other parts of our code can now run. Now, that doesn't really do much for us at this point right now. But if we use some of the Unity's built-in functions, if we use some of their built-in classes, if we instantiate some of their built-in classes, say new, and let's say wait, for and you'll see all these different things that we can wait for and the most popular thing is wait for seconds if we go wait for seconds here and then we use our cooldown timer inside of there watch what happens here we're going to go back inside of the game we're going to press play on the unity here and then i'm going to click and i'm clicking right now right still clicking and then it finally goes off five seconds later three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi Another explosion. There's a cooldown timer now built into our system because of this. Why did this work? Well, you see, can explode is not being set to true right off the bat. What's happening here is the system's running code just like it normally does. It runs this function just like it normally does, just like it runs any other function. And But it hits this yield return new right here, right? And so a yield return isn't quite the same as just a normal return. It doesn't just kick you out of this and doesn't come back. It bookmarks this spot. And when you do it with this return time, it does it and it does it for the amount of seconds that's for this. It uses wait for seconds and it waits for that amount of time before it comes back to this bookmark and then it runs the code below this after that point and because we have this cooldown set to five seconds five over here it's waiting for five seconds it comes back to this bookmark and then it runs the code below this sets this to true and at that point we can can explode again and it will start a code routine again just like that and that's really code routines in a nutshell that's how they work you can make it so that they are time sensitive and the cool part about this is wait for seconds it actually works within the time scale system so if i actually go over here and i say if input get key down and we'll say key code dot space right and i say time dot time scale equals zero so basically pausing the game right there right now watch this if i go back inside of unity now and i do an explosion we wait three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi oh there we go. We're doing our explosion. Then I hit the space bar and notice that right there, it paused the whole effect right there. Look, it's completely paused. It's not running. Now, if I hit my space bar again, well, then it's not going to unpause because I programmed this like an idiot. Okay, so let's go back inside of here and let's actually make it so that it'll do it, uh, that it'll unpause it as well. I do not know what I was thinking. Okay, so <laughs> if time dot time scale 
Oh, uh, equals zero, equals equals zero. There's a way to do the shorthand too. Then we're gonna make it so that it equals one. And else, time dot time scale equals zero. So it'll pause it if it's not pause. You know, it'll pause it and unpause it now. Let's try to do that again. I do not know. Oh man, I can't believe that I, was, I did something that dumb. All right, so let's try this again. I make an explosion. I hit the pause button. We're gonna wait for about five seconds. Three, four, five. Then I'm gonna unpause it by hitting the space bar and it's gonna go off. And look, I have to click for a long time. It's been several seconds and then it finally goes off. Because when it's paused, it also pauses that timer, right? It also pauses this timer right here because we're waiting for seconds. Now, if you don't want to work like that, you don't have to make it work that, that. You can totally go over here, wait for seconds real time, and then we can use the cooldown timer. And in real time, it won't use that pause system at all. So I can go back inside of Unity. We can just go in here and wait. I can hit the explosion. I hit pause the game. Four, five, and there it goes. It goes off. It was, I counted a little bit too fast. But you get the point. And now it's probably been more than five seconds right about now, right? So if I'm pause the game and hit it right really quick, boom, it goes off right off the bat. Now when it's paused, time is still flowing for it because it's using real time instead of the in-game time, which is pretty cool, right? So I think that you're kind of getting the point that uh, you can do some different things with this and there's some other wait for things that you can do with this. But basically this is just a bunch of different time systems inside of here. The things that are really different is this will do the end of frame. You can kind of read it and see exactly what they, they mean by end of frame on there. This will wait for the next fixed update. This will wait until a boolean is true. And so when you do this, you actually have to give it a boolean. So it'll wait until, and then you have to give it a boolean inside there. And then there's another one that does uh, wait while. This will execute until a boolean's false. So again, you have to feed it a boolean. And that's it, that's all there is. I really want to break this down real quick one last time because people get really, really confuzzled by this part right here and by this part right here. This is just a return type. This is something that Unity built in. It's just an interface. All you guys have to do is use it as a return type and that's it. That's all there is to it. So if you just put that inside of there, you're fine. That's all there is to it. It's just like writing any other class for a return type or writing int or anything else. And it just makes it so that you have to add one word on here. Now, some people get really confused by this part right here, by this new wait for seconds thing here because they're not used to making a whole instance for the return but really even if you did something like this you uh, made a wait for seconds which is just an uh, object just like anything else and then you want to say wait time and then you put uh, that equal to new wait for seconds right and you did this with the cooldown timer and then instead of returning that whole thing you could just return wait time right this would that make more sense to you guys? So like the only thing that's changed is this yield and that's just the thing that tells the system, hey, this is a bookmark. You can just bookmark this. The other part that's different from using a normal function is this part right here where it says start coroutine, but that's just because we're using this yield. We have to let Unity kind of do some extra work for us so that they can know that, oh yeah, we're gonna use that bookmark system, we're gonna use that yield inside of there. So they can kind of have that thing running beside this. It's it's complicated, I'm not even 100% sure what they do on their back end. I do wanna show you guys the reason why the start coroutine works is because this returns something, because it looks funky having a function within a function. You gotta remember this function returns something, it returns an I enumerator, which is this interface. So theoretically, you can create an I enumerator and then you can call it the explosion function, right? And then we can just simply say explosion spell here, like this. And then we can literally just write down explosion function like this. And that might make more sense to you as well. Like now that you're like, oh wait, that does return something. It does do that. It's not just doing some magic function within a function thing. This function is not running another function. No, this function returns something that this function then uses. So if I go back into Unity, you're gonna see this all still runs, even though I just did all that finagling because everything still returns something. And then if we wait, what, three, four, five, about now, there we go. 
man, my sense of time is really bad. You get my point though, like these things all return something like when your yield returned. So the only thing that you really need to like remember inside of here, like the only thing that's like different syntax wise from what you're probably used to is really this yield word. Everything else, you're probably not used to the way it was written. It'll be shorter just to like, you know, make this right here instead of doing it like that. But you get the point that it's just uh, you creating an instance of something. So. I hope that all makes sense. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know if this helped you to understand things a little bit more. I'm gonna leave a link to my coffee account inside the description below where you can donate me a coffee if you want to support this channel. Yeah, it's in no way necessary. I'm so much more grateful for your time than I can put into words. I'll eventually be making a Udemy course. I'm probably gonna be releasing it next month sometime. So in November, 2020, if anybody is interested in it, it's gonna be a Metroidvania course. Otherwise, I hope that this video really hits you in the right spot <laughs> gives you the knowledge that you were looking for thank you so much for spending this time with me i hope that you guys have a great day